oh hello there hi everybody I hope you are okay on this Sunday afternoon yes we are here again with another live stream and you may have already noticed that I am in a very different place today later on I will show you around a part of my house that you've never seen before and there is a special reason why I'm up here today can you guess what it is also coming up today we'll talk about uses of the word foot and feet with Mr Steve joining in as well on the live chat of course you are more than welcome to join in as well yes we are all here together again and it's a brand new month yes November has arrived after all it's a Sunday afternoon it's just after two o'clock here in the UK and this is live English live from much Wenlock in England on a Sunday afternoon this is live English Is it really Sunday again? I can't believe it. Dip, 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 to do. Here we go again. Yes, Sunday has arrived once more and that can only mean one thing we are live on YouTube oh hello there hi everybody this is Mr Duncan in England how are you today are you okay I hope so are you happy well are you happy I really really hope so here we are all together again on the live English stream and can I just warn you that I am drinking coffee at the moment and normally whenever I drink coffee I get very very excited about everything around me so please excuse my behavior today if I get too excited but I am drinking some coffee at the moment in, in fact can I just finish my coffee do you mind is it okay let me just finish my coffee just a moment mm. Mm. oh there is nothing like a cup of coffee to perk you up perk I love that word perk something that perks you up makes you feel a little excited and maybe <sighs> happy I hope you are happy today so here we go lots of things to talk about today we have a special commemoration taking place tomorrow and also next weekend there is something special happening as well November is quite a busy month to be honest lots of things going on during the month of November so many many things happening hopefully I will have time to cover all of them today but first of all let's have a look outside what is the weather doing outside it is a very gloomy day today it feels very autumnal today very much like autumn it's damp it's quite cloudy and it's it's not cold that's the one thing I'm very surprised about today because it's not actually cold outside in fact it's quite mild it's about 13 degrees today so it isn't cold by any means but it is very damp so it does feel very autumnal let's have another view looking in a different direction you can see it's rather dismal dismal that's a great word by the way dismal something that is terrible something that looks very gloomy can be described as dismal so where was I at the start of today's lesson did you see where I was 
I was in a very unusual place and we will find out more about that later on also tomorrow as I mentioned earlier it is the 5th of November a special day and it all has something to do with this guy do you know who this guy is <laughs> there is a clue there by the way so if you know who this guy is maybe you can let me know later on and all will be revealed also do you like playing sport now I'm not a big sports fan and I don't play much sport to be honest but there are some sports that I've never ever tried in my life there are some types of sport that I've never done so later today I'm going to tell you all the sport that I've never taken part in so all of the activities that I've never done in my life and I will be swapping my list with Steve's list so I will see if the things that I haven't done are the same as the things that Steve hasn't done talking of Mr Steve <laughs> yes he will be here today at around about 2 30 did it get colder in here or is it just me I think it's just you Mr Steve definitely so Mr Steve coming a little bit later on today also we have the live chat we will take a look at that very soon as well so many things to show you I, I'm I'm bursting with excitement yesterday we went for a lovely walk yes autumn is definitely here and look here we have some lovely mid-autumn colors I absolutely love autumn I know I mention it every week especially during the autumn season I always talk about this particular season because I love it it's so colorful so here you can see some shots that I filmed yesterday during our walk into town and you can see all the leaves are looking quite magnificent I love the color of autumn and there you can see the leaves turning gold and brown and some of them look quite magnificent like those you can see and of course an autumn day wouldn't be complete without taking a walk through the leaves so there you can see all the leaves on the ground slowly rotting away and I couldn't resist yesterday taking a walk through all of the <laughs> all of the leaves on the ground and I love the sound as well I love the sound of of footsteps in the leaves as you brush them away so autumn is definitely here you can see for sure that we have a definite autumnal feel at the moment in the air and look at that oh magnificent I absolutely love autumn <laughs> in fact I think I will give autumn a round of applause well done autumn See, you can see how much I love autumn. And there it goes. I hope you enjoyed that. And of course, we are here today, live as live can be. It wouldn't be a live stream without the live chat. So let's have a look and take a peep. There it is the live chat is now up and running but the big question is who was first on the live chat let's have a look shall we let's go back to the beginning of the live chat and take a look at who is first on the list wow so many people are here already it's a very busy one today I have a feeling it's going to be very busy oh hello Tomek congratulations finally you are first on the live chat and of course just for you we have a special round of applause 
congratulations to tomek you are first on the live chat i think it might be the first time that you've ever been first on the live chat so congratulations to you matrix is here you are second hello everybody and hello to you matrix huang is here also blue thunder martha is here belarusia and pedro together again have you noticed how belarusia and pedro are always next to each other on the live chat and don't forget they are in charge today so please behave yourself or else belarusia and pedro might get a little bit angry connell is here as well hello connell thanks for joining me olga and also julia fetty also gosia sarah rastia hello rastia rastia is watching in germany hello there yes i do have quite a few followers in germany so are there any other germans on today any anyone else watching in germany today rastia wants to know so if you are in germany please let me know Grigory is here as well. Hello, Grigory. I don't think we've spoken before, have we? Oh, okay then. Yes. Hello, Grigory. Welcome. Is it your first time? Ashtuosh, Ashtuosh Singh is watching. But where? Where are you? Law is here as well. Hello to you. Chakhan is here. Also, wow, lots of people who appear to be watching for the first time oh, okay then I'm, I'm very intrigued to find out where you all are also Francisco I think I've mentioned you already Hassam Hassam is here hello to Hassam watching in Egypt also we have Beatriz oh hello Beatriz I remember saying hello to you last week so welcome back once more to the live stream Stefan hello Stefan where are you Razul is here as well also we have pos positive positive oh I think that's positive positive to world watching in Ukraine hello to you as well Ania and also Robert hello Robert Tom where are you watching I'm very interested to find out today where you are watching so if you can please tell me where you're in the world where are you watching at the moment also Hang Lai is here awesome thank you very much for that also we have Troy who is watching in China oh hello to China hello to China a big Ni Hao to you as well also Robert is here as well and also analytic brain hello to analytic brain thank you for joining me today and can I say a big special thank you to analytic brain yes I think you know what I am talking about there thank you very much you gave me a very big surprise just before I started my live stream <laughs> I, I was very very surprised and can I say a big thank you to you as well also to Kim Kim watching in Vietnam Sarah is drinking a cup of coffee as well just like me but I, I like to put some milk in my coffee to be honest so I don't like to have my coffee black I don't like it black I have mine with a little bit of milk mm, lovely very nice nice to meet you says van die do van tie do thank you very much for that also we have louis mendez is here as well hello louis and sue cat welcome back sue cat and can i say once again how lovely your garden looks mr steve and i 
were both talking about your garden we are quite fascinated by your garden so if you don't mind can i ask you a favor please sue cat would you mind sending maybe a couple of other photographs of your garden because we are quite fascinated by it i will be honest mr steve and i have been both talking about your garden this week <laughs> so we are quite fascinated by sue cat's garden <laughs> mad curry says hello to you hello to you you are not first i'm sorry about that or maybe it's your, the first time is it the first time that you've been on here if it is please let me know tias is here hello to tias thanks for joining us hello to everyone and congratulations for your 12th anniversary yes during the week i celebrated my 12th year on youtube can you believe it 12 years I've been making my English lessons. Oh my goodness. Now I really do feel old. Robert says Guy Fawkes. Ah, yes, you might be right. So who is this guy? <laughs> this guy is Guy Fawkes. And in a moment, we will take a look at a short video talking all about the reason why he is so significant also we have the live chat very very busy today it's lovely to see so many people here today wow i can't believe it troy says autumn is a very romantic season yes i think so there is nothing nicer than walking out on an autumn day walking through the leaves and looking around at all the beautiful colors that surround you i think so it is very cold in bangkok at the moment very cool in thailand hello from italy from michelle codimo hello to you as well wow lots of people on the live chat i have a feeling it's very busy today <laughs> silvana hello mr duncan here it is raining well we have had some rain this morning here in the uk but at the moment it's just very cloudy very dull and as i said earlier quite dismal there look at that you can see that the cloud is very low today you can see in the distance there is a large hill and the cloud is literally scraping across the top of the hill so we have lots of very low cloud today it is very misty and murky here in the uk and there you can see some live pictures so these aren't recordings this is the view out of the window right now so as i promised we are going to take a look at an excerpt from one of my video lessons and in this lesson I will be explaining why Guy Fawkes is such a significant person. Here in the UK, we have a tradition that involves lighting fires. Each year on November the 5th, people light large bonfires to commemorate the capture of a group of men who were plotting to blow up the Houses of Parliament and kill the then King of England in 1605. Parliament was and still is the meeting place of the British government. The plot, however, was foiled when Parliament officials discovered one of the plotters, a man named Guy Fawkes, guarding the gunpowder. This event became known as the Gunpowder Plot. The celebrations take place every November 5th. It is known as Guy Fawkes Night. Large bonfires are lit and life-size effigies of Guy Fawkes are burnt on the fires. Fireworks are also let off and quite often food such as baked potatoes are eaten. There is a rhyme that goes with this event too, 
which begins, Remember, remember the 5th of November, gunpowder, treason and plot. I see no reason why gunpowder treason should ever be forgot. So now you know the reason why November the 5th is so important. Yes, it's live English. Welcome if you've just joined me, if you have just clicked on my picture and now you are wondering what this is all about. This is live English. Every Sunday you can follow my live English streams every Sunday from 2 p.m. UK time. You can see now under the screen the details are coming across as if by magic. So every Sunday, 2 p.m., it's live English, it's live chat, it is myself, and also coming a little bit later on, oh, look, look at this lovely photograph. Can you see? Look at this lovely picture. Ah, oh, isn't that lovely? There we are together. Da, 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 da. So a little bit later on, Mr. Steve will be here as well on the live chat, joining us also to talk about various things today we are going to talk about uses of the word feet and foot so there are many uses of the word feet and foot that you can use in english and mr steve will be telling us all about those words a little bit later on so lots of things to do today and as if you needed reminding we have the live chat and there it is on the screen right now I have a feeling that the live chat is very busy today so many people George is here hello George watching in Alicante in Spain I've been following your videos for four years thanks for them I have learned a lot and a big hug as well. Thank you, George, for that. Also, Eric is here. And also Blue Thunder, Palmyra. Oh, hello, Palmyra. Did I say hello to you earlier? I think I might have forgotten you. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> Sue Cat says, I have thousands of photographs of my garden yes could you please send maybe maybe two or three photographs to my email address now don't worry I won't show them on the live stream but I want to have a look at them myself because I'm very intrigued your garden looks amazing can I let you in on a little secret I do like looking in people's gardens and the reason why I like to do that is because it gives me inspiration it gives me ideas and also Mr Steve who happens to be very keen on gardening so we do like to look at other people's gardens just to get some some inspiration so that's the reason why so don't worry <laughs> we're not going to come round to your house for a cup of tea so don't worry nothing like that is going to happen Mr. Steve will be here in a few moments, but first of all, I'm going to show you something that I mentioned at the start of today's live stream. I was in a very unusual place and now I am going to show you where I was. Would you like to see where I was yesterday? I was doing something in preparation for some work that I will be doing next week. Oh, hello there. Welcome to a very unusual part of my house. Can you guess where I am? I am at the highest point inside the house. This is the roof space otherwise known as the 
attic so you can call this space the attic or the loft loft attic roof space but the big question is why am I here what am I doing up here well that's a very good question because during the year this place is used to store many many things some of the things up here have been in this part of the house since I moved here whilst other things are put up here temporarily one of the things can you guess here is a small clue yes my Christmas decorations we are just a few weeks away from Christmas that means that it is time to put the Christmas decorations up once more in preparation for the festive season so I'm collecting all of the bits and pieces that I will need including my tinsel also I will be fetching the Christmas tree from the loft and needless to say there will be lots and lots of lights some of the lights will be inside the house whilst others will be on the outside of the house so as you can see I have lots of things to keep me busy over the next few days as I prepare for the Christmas season Tip, 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 to do. It is a Sunday, and already we are half an hour into today's live English stream. I can't believe how fast it's going. It's going so quickly. Talking of things that like to move fast, here is a guy who is always dashing around. He is such a busy man. Yes, it is Mr. Steve. Hello, hello everybody. Hello, Mr. Duncan and everybody out there across the world in all the different countries watching us, teaching you. Yes, that's what we're doing today. It wow. is live English, lots of English words. Mr. Steve has something special prepared. But the big question is, what is underneath this? Yes. So Mr. Steve is wearing a certain shirt underneath here but can you guess what shirt it is yes just before we continue we have also the mystery idiom because we didn't have one last week so i thought today we would have a mystery idiom and here it is today's mystery idiom can you guess what it is it is a well-known phrase in english but what is it so just say what you see what you see is what you say so there it is the mystery idiom I don't know what that one is mr duncan talking of mysteries what is underneath this material there perhaps is, there's nothing maybe maybe mr steve is naked you know strangely enough i came down into the studio mm -hmm. as i usually do a couple of minutes before i'm due on at 2.30. Yeah. And uh, Mr. Duncan suddenly threw this shawl. Actually, I don't know what it is. It's like a, some kind of cloth. What is I, it, Mr. Duncan? It is actually a sarong. A sarong, which actually it's quite cold in here today. Uh, so I'm quite pleased. So, oh. I, But then Mr. Duncan said, we want to reveal your shirt. Yes. We don't want you to just come on like that because well, I don't know why. It is a magnificent shirt. That's well, why. I that far. It's, it should be hanging up in an in an art gallery. I've worn it before. Yeah, I know. Well, that's the reason why I'm so excited. It's, There's it's, a story behind this shirt as well. <laughs> is there? Mm. <laughs> it didn't. Let's just say the first time I wore it somewhere, it didn't make a good impression. Oh, I see. No. So someone said that the shirt didn't look good. No, because I was supposed to be dressed in a certain way and I was dressed in this shirt and I didn't... I'll tell you when you reveal 
the shirt okay then well first of uh, all we will have a look at the live chat would you like to have a definitely. look at Okay, let's do it now then. Here's the live yes. chat. TS thinks I'm naked. I saw that already. Oh, I see. Uh, uh. So TS TS says, please let Mr. Dun Mr. Steve be naked. Oh, Pedro thinks I'm naked as well. It He's would smiling. It would appear that a lot of people think that you are ah. naked. You are not. I can assure you now that Mr. Steve is not naked underneath. So shall we reveal it? Here well. we go. I'm going to reveal it. And I can say who's got it right. Should I spin around? You don't have to spin. I will reveal it. Put your arms down, Steve. <laughs> You're making it very difficult for me. Here we go. <laughs> One. People can't really see it. One, two, three. <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> ha, ha. Yes, Olga got it right. It's the grey shirt with the lines on it. Well done, <laughs> Olga. <laughs> yes it's, Although it's quite cold in here so i could do with it on it, it is actually. it is it is the shirt that looks like looks like a, a newspaper stand strange enough you see i years ago the story behind this shirt i'll keep it brief because it might be a bit boring it, it's boring uh, there it's boring already i let's, was going to a, a gala dinner i was in just, a choir let, let's make that the end no okay i'll do it now i was going to a gala dinner I was in a big choir, about 300 of us in this choir, and they were having a big night out at a posh place. And um, what I didn't realise is that it was supposed to be black tie. You were supposed to wear a dinner jacket. So I bought this shirt and just turned up in this shirt and everybody else was in dinner jackets. I felt very embarrassed and I had to spend the whole night sitting there in just this shirt which is smart enough but not when everybody else is wearing dinner jackets so everyone else was was looking mm. very very formal i didn't know it was a formal night and you were wearing that yes because i hadn't read the instructions properly what a mistake there we go <laughs> so the live chat is busy let's go back to the live chat first of all yes how did olga know she studied my clothes already well I've I've noticed that you only wear about five different shirts on the live chat or on the live stream. So I've only noticed I've noticed that you only wear about five. So they had a one in five chance of getting it right. Tom X says it's a cool shirt. Why were you self conscious? I wasn't self conscious. Mr. Duncan covered me up with that sarong because he wanted to to do a big reveal to do a big reveal suddenly reveal something and make a grand gesture about yes. it i wanted to i didn't want to but to, i wanted to unveil yes don't know why i've uh, worn it before people have seen it before I you can't buy this anymore by i love i love my sarong this sarong i i bought this in malaysia and, and can you see what is on it if i can turn it around properly can you see oh i think it's upside down no nope. can't see anything mr duncan can't you see? Is it a fish? It's it's a dolphin. A dol oh yeah, it's a dolphin. It's it's a big dolphin. Oh, yeah, it's a dolphin. So this Baby's is eye. this is my old sarong that I used to wear on the beach in Malaysia. So there it is. There it is. Oh. Anyone wants to know the make of my shirt? It's blue ink, which is a which I don't think it's a particular. That's not an expensive brand, blue ink. I don't it's think it is. Bit, are, you, are you okay? You want to sleep? <laughs> actually i do feel a bit i feel a bit sleepy today okay relaxed and sleepy <laughs> so let's hope i can i can uh, get into the groove i uh, don't know the meaning of self-conscious if you are self-conscious it means you are very aware of your appearance mm. so you are too aware so maybe you are worried about what people will think about your appearance or the way you dress or the way you look so you are self-conscious it it might cause you to be very shy when when going outside or perhaps you will avoid going outside or meeting other people so if you are very self-conscious if you feel self-conscious it means you are too self-aware you worry about what other people will think of you and i used to be like that in fact i still am a little bit like that mr duncan a bit self-conscious i worry about what people think of me what do i look like how do i sound i, I'm I a can't bit like that i can't believe for a moment that you are self-conscious 
you stood sideways to say that so you must have wanted to make an impact yes did you see how much i moved then yes i don't normally move that much that was a significant move meaning that you were actually quite excited about what you were about to say i was not I've never seen you move sideways and talk towards me in that way mr well, duncan it, if i get really excited i actually spin around completely i've seen that i i'm not self-conscious martha uh, it's just that it was Mr. Duncan's idea. He wanted to put that on me. I didn't. It was Mr. Duncan's idea. So, in fact, you've made me self-conscious now. Everything Everybody you... thinks I'm self... I'm not. No, he's not self-conscious. But everything you see is my fault. So, everything. Everything that happens in my English lessons and also on the live stream, I have to take full responsibility. Yes. Kaiba said she's late or he's late but hi anyway but no you've got to be busy you can, we can't expect people to, we're on for two hours we can't expect people to be here for the whole two hours you know i i love how observant people are olga says i remember that sarong you kept it on your chair when you did your live stream sitting down who said that olga olga so normally normally this is on my chair where i do my editing so this this normally sits on my chair it's it sort of comforts me so Yes, well spotted. I must admit, I think I think my viewers are very observant. They are, but you've got that's got a bit of sentimental value, hasn't it? That, it still uh, smells of the beach. Tia said that if you go to Malaysia, she's going to kidnap you and take you to Indonesia. <laughs> I don't like the sound of that. <laughs> You'll have to have a bodyguard I when think you go. Uh, we're not planning to go back to Malaysia, are we? Well, not now. <laughs> <laughs> not not now there's a chance of me being kidnapped oh dear uh tias is actually in indonesia yes i know oh i'm actually answering rung oh. on the oh, line i see yes <laughs> i'm not answering you i'm answering my lovely viewers yes. also we have durcina who is watching in Vietnam a lot of people watching in Vietnam mm. next weekend by the way it is worth mentioning that next weekend it is a special day because it's Remembrance Sunday next week I believe it is next week and that's one of the reasons why many people at the moment in the UK and in certain parts of the world are wearing these poppies and I have actually made a lesson all about the reason why people wear the poppy and there is actually a lesson on my youtube channel and there you can see it playing now on the screen so there is an actual lesson where i talk all about the reason why we wear the poppy and the actual link is underneath this live stream it's underneath so if you would like to watch that video later you are more than welcome to do so so that's what's happening next week and that's the reason why many people are wearing poppies at the moment that's the reason so now everyone knows something i wanted to talk about today steve yes sport okay sport 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 and there are many different types of sport did you know that fishing fishing is a sport yes a slow one yes uh, so when, you, when you go when you go fishing you you you, you try to get a, a fish out of the water and you 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 bring it in and then later you will eat it i think the sport lasts about a day with fishing and then because I, I my dad and i used to go fishing and they used to have sporting events and uh, you sort of start in the morning and finish later on and I think it's the the person that uh, catches the biggest fish or the most weight of fish uh, will win. But I think normally it's who can catch the biggest fish and they weigh it and then you win a prize. So, yes, yes. fishing has been a sport for some time. Yes, it's quite interesting that they call it a sport because you always think of sport being something that's very active. So the person taking part is, is moving and doing lots of things. But... The only thing moving when you go fishing are the fish. <laughs> so people sit on river banks and they take the sandwiches with them and they have a, uh, a tub full of maggots 
to to put on the hooks uh, for the fish. Bait. Bait. And they sit there all day, and then the winner. And that there is a prize. It's quite it's quite hotly contested. <laughs> is it? Uh, so <laughs> yes, you have something a very fast sport like a hundred meter run, which is over in nine seconds or something. I don't know what the world record is, but it's under ten seconds. Uh, and then you've got fishing, which lasts all day. So that's the two extremes. Oh, I of see. Sport, I would say. <laughs> I've never. I don't think I've ever heard anyone compare running in a marathon or a, or a, or a hundred meters dash to fishing. It's very interesting. That's a very interesting point. They're both sports. But there are sports that we've both tried, such as football, because we did this at school. Mm -hmm. And rugby, although they wouldn't let me play rugby at school. <laughs> they, I'm not joking. I know I've told this story before, but people don't believe me. I, I was not allowed to play rugby at school because they said that I was too fragile. Mm. But I've seen pictures of you and you were you were like a skeleton. You looked like a skeleton. I was like a stick insect. Yes. So, you know, you could have broken your bones very easily. <laughs> yes. So they uh, wouldn't they wouldn't let me play rugby. Uh, so they said, no, you can't play rugby. You're too fragile. You filled out a bit now, though, as we know. Yes. In certain places. Talking of which. Yes. My diet is going very well today. Well, today. Let the viewers be the judge of that. Well, what about my view? What about my thoughts? <laughs> I've got my thoughts. I have good news to report on my diet. I, I weighed myself today mm -hmm. and I have lost. One pound. That's good. One it, pound. That's it, half a kilogram. But at least it's going down. Yes, but Mr. Duncan. OK, Mr. Duncan, let me put this in perspective. OK. So was it three weeks ago that you announced that you would be losing a stone between that period and the end of the year? Well, it's not the end of the year yet. Well, Mr. Duncan, a pound in three weeks, I would not say is a particularly strong effort. And particularly as if you weigh yourself, if you weigh yourself, at different points in the day, your weight will vary by plus or minus two pounds anyway. Well, I must admit, I did have a so poo. That's just whether, a margin of error. Whether I, I, <laughs> just before weighing myself, I did have a poo. So maybe I've tried that. It doesn't make much difference. I think it does. Well, it, I suppose it. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose it depends how big the poo is. That's right. If it's a very big poo, you, you might lose more weight. So, but did you weigh yourself be after a poo the three weeks ago? I can't remember. <laughs> so you could have been, uh, you know, you've got to, it's got to be an equivalent, equivalence. Yes. So, uh, so I, I've got to lose a little bit more weight, but I have been more active over the last couple of weeks. So at least I've lost a pound. Yes, but that's within the margin of error that you could get in any one day weighing yourself. And, uh, you know, the machine itself could be off by a pound. So, in fact, in fact, you could have actually put weight on. I don't think that's a good enough effort, Mr. Duncan. Thank you. for uh, Thank you for your support, Steve. And you've got to stop buying chocolate and tubs of ice cream. And um, so, you you know, you're not I don't think you're doing well enough, Mr. Duncan. Mm -hmm. Let's mm -hmm. see what people mm -hmm. say. Mm -hmm. This is all I hear when Steve talks. I don't do that. When Steve talks, this is what I hear. Yes, because you don't listen, Mr. Duncan. You don't listen to advice. You don't listen to advice. You're a bit arrogant. It's the same. It's the same thing with putting uh, washing uh, liquid into the washing machine. What? Uh, sorry. It foams up everywhere. It doesn't. It does. It foams up everywhere I, because you put. You don't measure it. You just chuck a load in you don't ask talk crap and uh, he blames it on the saying oh there's something on the towels it's not he never measures it so you know he won't listen he won't listen to people has this become a this is almost a, a regular thing now every mm. week you complain about I'm that. berating you mr duncan yes, anyway we're only know. sort of joking oh it's boring me. I think I might click uh, away can oh, I can I click away from my own live stream I could take over <laughs> 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 I think we both know that's not happening. 
you wouldn't let me here is something we are trying to do anyway um this is something that that we did last week do you remember when we went for a cup of tea last week and we've decided that we want to start a new trend oh yes do you remember when i was yes, yes. last week we were having a drink of tea and mm -hmm. mr steve started doing something very unusual mm. and i was quite mesmerized by it i couldn't take my eyes off what mr steve was doing and now i think we are going to start a new trend so the next time you see someone sitting with a cup of tea tell them that this is what they should be doing So there it is, the new trend that we are trying to introduce. Drinking your tea with a spoon, a teaspoon, because that's why they call it a teaspoon. They call it a teaspoon because you drink your tea with the teaspoon. So this is something we are trying to introduce as a new trend around the world. So next time you go out for a cup of tea, don't forget to take your spoon with you. And there's Steve looking very happy with his his new style of drinking tea. So there it is. That is our new trend. And I'm hoping that we will introduce this in 2019. So next year, 2019, the big trend will be drinking your tea with a spoon. And that was created by us. So don't forget. Don't forget where you saw it first. You saw it first here. But the reason I was doing that, Mr. Duncan, is was because the tea was very hot and oh. I wanted to drink some tea. So I, I just started drinking it with a spoon. OK. So that it would be it would cool off a bit quicker and I wouldn't burn my mouth. Yes. So it looked like I was drinking soup, but in fact it was tea. We don't have a teaspoon so that we can drink tea. A teaspoon is so you can use it for the sugar to stir your tea. Yes, you use the teaspoon to stir your tea. But you don't normally drink with it. But we are changing that. Yes, this our is, new trend. No, this is our new trend. That's the reason why I mentioned it. So this is the new trend for those that missed it. You can see how hot it was, the steam coming off it. Yes, but this is the new trend for 2019. And this was introduced by us. So there is proof. Me. There is proof now, although it was my idea. It wasn't. I was doing it. I was doing it. And then you said, oh, I'm going to film that because that's very unusual. OK. Yes. You okay. didn't tell me to do it. I was doing it. Uh, that's not the official story. It is. Uh, OK, then I will see you in court. So there it is. Something to start next week when you are out and about and hopefully it will be the big trend of 2019. See if, yes, everybody do it in restaurants, cafes, everywhere they go and yes. see what reaction you get. Yes. So drink your tea with a teaspoon mm. instead of drinking it directly from the cup. <sighs> do you like fire, Mr. Steve? Do I like fire? Do you like fire? Do I like it? Do I do you like it? Well, it's, it's, is fire something that you like? Well, you can like fire. Can you? Yes. I wouldn't say that I like fire. I like a fire in a fireplace. Yes. yes. I like a fire. There is there is something interesting. I always think about fire. It's it's strangely sort of hypnotizing when you see a fire burning. You you feel drawn towards it well right now we are going to take a look at an excerpt from one of my full english lessons where we talk all about that very subject it random Can you see what I'm doing today? I'm preparing to light a fire. 
I have some old wood and garden debris to dispose of. To start a fire, you need some dry material. This will light easily. Paper is the most common material used, or small pieces of wood will also do the job. The material used to start a fire is called kindling. You use kindling to start the fire. Kindling establishes the fire. There is also the word kindle, which means to start a fire. Kindling is a noun, while kindle is a verb. I will use a match to start the fire. I will strike the match and light the paper. This will start the fire. The paper will ignite. The word ignite comes from the Latin word for fire. We sometimes use the word pyro to describe something related to fire. For example, a person who is addicted to starting fires can be called a pyromaniac. The most obvious parts of a fire are the flames and smoke. Can you see the flames? The movement of the flames cannot be predicted. Flames move randomly. We can use the word lick to describe the movement of a fire's flame. The flames licked around the door frame. A flame flickers. We can describe the flame on a candle as a flickering flame. A flame can shimmer, flicker, glow, dance. The fire I'm lighting today will be safely contained. This container is called an incinerator. You burn things in an incinerator. The inside of the incinerator will become very hot. To keep the fire under control, I must put this lid on it. Now the fire will burn steadily and remain safe. The small hole in the centre of the lid allows the smoke to escape in a controlled way, just like the chimney on a house would. Fires are fun to watch, but they can also be very dangerous, especially if they get out of control. After the fire has gone out, there is normally some debris left. This grey looking substance is called ash. This is all that is left of what was burned. You can also put out a fire using water. This action can be described as extinguish. You extinguish the fire. You put the fire out. You have extinguished the flames. The fire has been put out.
here we go it is sunday it's just coming up to three o'clock on a sunday afternoon and we are live as live can be from the uk for those wow. for those who are wondering uh, what were you saying steve i was about to say we were looking at the live chat while that video was playing yeah and it's been getting very hot and uh, very interesting and exciting all sorts of things going on lots of comments yes pedro's been flexing his muscles yes pedro has been kicking people out of the room yes very good i don't good. know why because we didn't see it so i don't well want done to I, pedro i don't want to see it maybe it's something really horrible yes well i think i think some applause <laughs> I think some claps and some applause are in uh, are due for Pedro. So so just for Pedro for kicking the horrible person out the room. Although we don't know what was going on because we can't see the message. Right there. I'm, I'm clapping. Oh, yes. <laughs> I don't know which live stream you're on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on an unlive stream today. So Jamelia says your metabolism slows down with age that is true when i was young i had a very high metabolism so i used to eat lots of food as a child but i would never put any weight on so yes maybe jamelia maybe you are right there i think so anna says mr steve you are an elegant person why do you slurp your tea with the teaspoon a few people have said uh pedro said as well uh, you know uh, commenting the fact that i was slurping i can tell you now everybody watching i was not slurping because there was no sound to that video but while it was being played mr duncan here in the studio made the slurping noise himself it's true it was he me. was doing it yes it was me it wasn't me at all while the video was playing he was the microphone was on and he was making a slurping sound eric try and pretend it was me but it wasn't okay steve calm down eric says another trend will be drinking soup without a spoon so mm. maybe you will slurp your soup from the bowl instead of using a soup spoon thank you christina a nice comment about my my shirt yes it's nice it's very eye-catching <laughs> saturino says when i was young i used to practice boxing in fact i was a very small size and other people would beat me up so my mother sent me to a boxing gym to to practice boxing and then things got better oh. so so i think maybe saturino <clears throat> was the one doing the hitting <laughs> so if anyone said anything bad to you or picked on you you would punch their lights out i think so <laughs> uh estiano says can we see mr duncan's massive hole <laughs> sorry oh in his trainers in his trainers oh I, I wasn't sure where that was going then Estan Estanislao says, I want to see the hole in Mr. Duncan's trainers. I I'm always amazed by how much people notice when they are watching my videos. It's, well, those it's, tra if, I, if it's the trainers I'm thinking of, you've had those for about 20 years, haven't you? I have not had those. You've for, had them for a long time. I've had them for about 10 years. There's literally no tread left on them. <laughs> but you're a bit like me. You don't like to throw something out if it's still serviceable. No. Well, well, uh, that that's just laziness. <laughs> probably is. I think so. Um, uh, Rungsack said he's sick of the traffic in Bangkok. I saw that so that uh, that chimes with me I was stuck in traffic on Friday okay so nothing to do with anything but uh, <laughs> just thought I'd mention it it's what we call it's what we call a propos of nothing ah Kamal says I'm very happy to join the show hi oh, sorry someone's gonna correct me a propos a propos of nothing oh it looks like people were saying something against us Words against our teachers, no bad language, no cyberbullying, that, correct? That's for not very nice. Thank oh. you, Pedro, once again. Pedro is like a bouncer at the door of a nightclub. Yes. And also Belarusia is the female bouncer. So a bouncer is a person that stands outside a nightclub and they will stop unpleasant people from getting in. <laughs> so, yes. So Pedro and Belarusia are today's administrators and moderators on the live chat so please behave yourself 
Perhaps uh, we could give Pedro instead of instead of a spanner by the side of his uh, in blue there. Perhaps <laughs> we could have like a a big truncheon or, or or a baseball bat. Yes, <laughs> or something like, something more appropriate. Mind you, if you got hit on the head by a spanner, that would be quite uh, yes. painful. I, th I think a spanner is pretty good. It's very suitable. Lewis says that Pedro will be the new Brazilian president. <laughs> <laughs> well, with yes. that, with that attitude, he might. Yeah. Pedro for president. Apparently, we drink tea in Brazil, but not like you. So many people drink it as medicine when they are sick. Ah, Ingles, Ingles Evida. Well, you you aren't you starting to drink something at the moment to help you stay asleep? Well, <laughs> yes, uh, yes, uh, uh, mm, yes. What shall I say? Um, okay, so there are all sorts of different teas, herbal teas. Yes, but which one are you taking now? Chamomile. So apparently, chamomile tea. Chamomile tea. Chamomile tea is chamomile very... tea. <laughs> chamomile tea, spelt C H A M. It starts like that. OK, write it down then. All right, then you carry on talking. I'll see if I can remember how to spell chamomile. Steve is now going to spell chamomile. Use that one. OK. This is good, isn't it? If you just tuned in. Hello. Hello. This is YouTube in 2018. This is what it looks like. <laughs> isn't it great? YouTube is amazing. You can actually watch a person in a completely different country talking to you live in high definition. It's amazing. And if you feel like it, you can also. <laughs> You're cheating. I'm cheating. Yes. Steve is cheating. He he got the box because I'd spelled it incorrectly. Yes. There's no C H. It's there's no C H. There's That's no wrong. there's no H in chamomile. It's just C A, C A M, O M I L E. So it's like camo. And then mile. Yes, exactly. Camo mile. Sounds like it's something that you drink on the road. Right there. I'm going to do something special here. Oh, ah, look at that. You see? And it, you can see how posh that 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 chamomile tea is. Chamomile infusion. Yeah, so there it is. Chamomile. Can you see it there on the screen? Hold yes. it very still. There it is. So chamomile chamomile and apparently this is supposed to help you sleep it's supposed well, it, no it doesn't mr duncan oh uh, well it could do chamomile tea is supposed to relax you if you're feeling a bit frayed around the edges a bit tense oh i see and you want to relax chamomile tea is supposed to be soothing it's supposed to contain chemicals ingredients not chemicals are the wrong word <laughs> chemicals uh, <laughs> molecules that, that will, will uh, help you relax I ingredients think, i think i preferred chemicals uh it's supposed to contain ingredients natural ingredients that help help you to relax yes um and i'm not sure if it works or not i think it's more psychosomatic what i think i think it's more sort of a bit in your mind so you you think it's going to soothe you you drink it and it's all in the mind i think so you believe that it works so it works and uh, I believe that it could work and it doesn't really. Okay. But what I find surprising is, is that Steve doesn't have difficulty falling asleep because mm. Steve can sleep anywhere. But sometimes you you feel disturbed in your sleep. So you wake up and then you can't get back to I sleep. I keep waking up with things on my mind. And then you can't get back to sleep. No. So I go to sleep sort of <laughs> half eleven, wake up at about four o'clock. So I've only had about four or five hours sleep and I can't get back to sleep again. It's something that started. It's quite annoying. So I went out yesterday to the chemist and bought some, uh, well, they're herbal sleeping tablets. OK. Containing. I wasn't intending to reveal all of this. I can't remember which. <coughs> What's in those tablets, Mr. Duncan? <laughs> I just sneeze then. Um, valerian. Okay, v A L. Then. I better not spell it now. God, this is making a -R this is making me fall asleep. A N, but okay. it might be E R. Yeah. Valerian Stop. tablets. <laughs> Stop trying to spell things. But uh, I took it. I took one last night, and uh, I still woke up. But I feel very sleepy today. So I think it's. I've got. I'm a bit hungover. 
Okay. From this so-called natural sleeping aid, which I looked up on Wikipedia, and it said that I've heard of valerian for years. It's supposed to help you sleep, but according to uh, Wikipedia, there's no study showing it actually works. Like most of these herbal remedies, you do a clinical trial with them, and it shows that they don't actually work at all. Well, most things uh, tend to have different results. Even even medicine that is recognised as having some some benefit. Sometimes it will help people and sometimes it won't. So it so it depends. Valerian. Valerian. Yes. Oh, you've got Valerian. Matt's got Valerian uh, in his garden. I always thought it was a planet from Star Trek. That's Vulcan. The planet Valerian. It sounds like a planet. Yes, you can. You can grow it in your garden. Uh, it, they've got, got quite nice flowers. I think it's sort of pinky flowers, Valerian, I think. Yes. Um, Camomile is a diuretic, reduces infl inflammation on the skin and the stomach, says Sue Cat. Oh, I didn't know that. Stomach is CH. Uh, so, yes. Um, well, I didn't know. It's, so it makes you go to the toilet, chamomile, then. It's a diuretic, makes you wee a lot. OK. And yes, but yes, well, that's maybe I should keep on taking it then. Um, there we go. Somebody else has said it's for your stomach as well. OK. Uh, Sarah says from Madrid says it's for... Uh, uh, for sleeping well and, and your stomach. The only trouble is if you have a big glass of chamomile tea before you go to bed, you're likely to wake up wanting to go to the loo. <laughs> so it's going to sort of counteract that you, yeah. you, you, you don't uh, want to you don't want to drink too much before you go to bed because you'll wake up in the night yeah, wanting that, to go to the toilet. That doesn't make sense. So you take something to help you sleep, but the thing that you take makes you want to wee in the night. So yes, it's so, diuretic. <laughs> well, the worst thing is you might wake up in the morning in a pool of your own wee wee well you well you certainly would have had a good night's sleep if that happened that's it because <laughs> if you wee in your bed there's probably something wrong with you yes did you ever wet the bed no i i i, I never did i never did but i had a i had a cousin that did really strangely enough it was quite a shameful thing if you when i when i was growing up it, it, people always talked about other children that wet their bed. You do a wee wee in your bed. Now this is common with young children. So so children often will will now and again they will have a little accident in bed where they, they go to bed and the next morning they wake up and they're all wet because they've had a wee wee in the night. Yes, and they uh, it's like a dog that needs training uh, <laughs> okay. so that it doesn't you know urinate in the house. But they used to say there used to be a negative connotation with bed. If you were a bed wetter, I always remember when I grew up, my people were people would talk about certain. Like I had a cousin that used to wet the bed, apparently. And, I, I'm, and uh, I used to be told, "Oh, your cousin wets his bed." Yeah, you know, okay. it was something bad. Yes. Uh, but what, but what, now what, I think. Oof. What was his name? I don't know. I'm going to say what his name was. I want to. I want to. I want to know who it is. I think it's often associated with with sort of uh, nervous disorders. Yeah. If you wet your bed as a child, at least it used to be. I don't know whether it still is, but I don't know. Do people talk about bed wetting? These children wetting their well, beds. Well, I, I think people still wet the bed. Mm. I think it still happens. I don't. I don't think it's been banned. I think it shows <laughs> that you're you're a bad parent. I think uh, <laughs> because your your child nervous. I don't know. Maybe think, I'm wrong. I think I've wet the bed once or twice, and that's only in the last week. <laughs> Mr. Duncan. Ah, <laughs> uh, oh, dear me. Inglis says... Um, oh, what? Uh, Louie Ibrahim says that uh, Mr. Steve definitely wet the bed. I oh, know I didn't. I was not a bed wetter. Yes. I had good bladder control when I was I, a child. I bet, I bet you used to wet the bed all the time. Oh, Estanislo says, I recommend to smoke super skunk if you want to sleep. That's a, I think that's a form of marijuana. Is that illegal? Uh, well, no, I think you can probably buy it from a drug dealer. Uh, well, I think that might still be illegal. Actually, do you know, I read there was one herb <sighs> that uh, definitely was very good for sort of nervousness and uh, helping you sleep called Carver. K-A-V-A, -A, Carver. Mm. It's supposed to be good for all sorts of sort of nervous things. It makes, calms you down, helps you sleep. Uh, but unfortunately, in the UK and most of Europe, it's banned from sale. It's a natural plant which comes from, um, I think it's like Hawaii, somewhere like that. Hawaii? Not Hawaii, but it's sort of... Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's from uh, South Sea Islands. 
Okay. It's from the it's from sort of South Sea Island areas, <laughs> and they drink it there uh, as a sort of relaxant and yeah. a sort of. I think it's I think it's like a mild form of marijuana. But you sort of drink, it has the same effect on you. Yeah. But it's banned in this country because... Well, uh, well, that's, I think you've just explained why. No, it's not that reason. Apparently, it was associated with liver damage and death. Oh, OK. Uh, oh. But they discovered that, that, in fact, it wasn't, that there was really no evidence for that. And you can buy it in Germany, you can buy it in America, and you, but you can't buy it in this country. Mm. And I was looking online to see if I could buy some, but you couldn't, you can't buy it in the UK. It's what, banned. What's it called? Cava, K-A-V-A. I thought that was a cheap champagne. Is that cheap champagne? <laughs> if you get ch very cheap and awful champagne, isn't that Carver? That's C A V A. Okay. Carver. I think it's like Polynesian islands, uh, and that they used to boil it up and drink it there so as a sort of not, re relaxant. Not so not Hawaii. Well, it's. I, I think it's South Sea. What we would describe as South Sea islands. Okay. Uh, Polynesia. I don't even know if that name, if that still exists as as a country anymore. Ha, do you have one of those old old globes or one of those old <laughs> atlases that that sort of you know people from two thousand years ago used to use to navigate their way around their back garden? Oh, Blue Thunder's admitting uh, that they used to wet the bed. Yeah, some people do. There is some no, there do. is there is no shame in wetting the bed sometimes at night you might have a very exciting dream or maybe you are running away from someone and you are terrified and you will wee wee in the bed so there yes matt matt uh, matt k boom in the uk doctors are allowed to pres prescribe medicinal marijuana for now yes they can i think that's come in now uh uh but it's um medicinal <laughs> so that means it's had the the psychoactive ingredients removed so you're yes. not going to get a high from it but there are other constituents of, of, of <laughs> marijuana that, that, uh, that, that, that have health benefits <laughs> Just um uh, it's quite an incredible plant but of course uh, yes i did say to you shall i get some marijuana mr duncan and that'll help me sleep and you said no mr duncan because it's actually quite bad for you i think long well term. it's it's also illegal you, you can only get it on prescription you can't just buy marijuana in the street that's that's wrong that's bad i know people where i can get it from okay thanks in birmingham so they get <laughs> i'm not going to do it my, i'm not my, smoking drugs you it's do re you do realize by saying that my my credibility and reputation has just gone down the gutter no my credibility might have done yes but by association I'm, I'm slurping tea and now i'm thinking no i'm not i'm not going to be having any any was, drugs of was, any no please uh, sorry are you trying to get us actually taken off youtube no <laughs> is this is, i think steve is trying to sabotage my career <laughs> We don't do drugs. We don't take drugs. We don't buy illegal drugs from anyone. No, I Just didn't say we sure. did. Because you're, you're not actually allowed to do this on YouTube. You know that, don't you? What, not buy illegal drugs? Talk about it. Oh, or, I didn't or, know that. Or promote it. I'm not promoting it. People have been... I'm saying I'm not going to do it. Good, but you kind of <laughs> you kind of said you were just a few moments no, ago. No, I didn't. I didn't. I said I'm not going to. Good. We're not going to. OK. Relax, if Mr. Duncan. I know, Chill out. Yes. Smoke some weed. Sorry. You... Oh, I mean, uh, no. I don't... <laughs> we're not we're not smoking weed. It's not happening. Ooh, we're going to no. start with cigarettes first and work our way up. Yes. I don't even <laughs> I don't even smoke cigarettes. Uh, yes. Anyway. Well, they've made it legal Ooh. in uh, Canada. Yes. It's now legal in Canada. Fantastic. Whoop de doo. So we're talking about sports. Very upset about that, Mr. Duncan. We're talking. Well, I like to keep my YouTube channel. Well, I'll we're not promoting anything. <laughs> the more like we talk about it, the more you go on like this, the more people will will think there's something well, wrong. Well, well, I think I think he's on the drugs now. So <laughs> I'm just high on life, Mr. Duncan. High okay. on life. We are talking about sport today. Sports we've never done. So we're going to take a look at some sports that I've never done in my life. What's what's wrong now? Nothing. Sports you've never done. Well, what's well, wrong? That, that's just any sport, isn't it? <laughs> oh, oh, see what I did there, Mr. Duncan? What's wrong now? <laughs> no, you, nothing's wrong at all. You seem to be pointing at the live chat. Well, Inglis said Mr. Steve was just pretending, which I was. Yes, but but yes. YouTube, sometimes YouTube doesn't doesn't know that. They take everything too seriously these days. So lots of people lose their YouTube channels. So. 
for, for various small reasons so you have to be so careful now with it thunder said that uh, you might hear what i really sound can like can you just move back <laughs> you're getting more and more in front of me oh right okay <laughs> Uh, Blue Thunder might be sending us a uh, sending us a, a, a an audio tape of his voice. An audio tape. <laughs> an audio. <laughs> Sorry, this is you do realize oh. this is 2018. We don't have audio tapes anymore. We don't have video tapes or or wind up gramophones. Talking of sports. <laughs> T.S. says, have you ever played badminton? I used to play a lot of badminton. I tell you a lot of it. I tell you which sport I've never played. Do you know which sport this is? Who are those two hunks? <laughs> well, it's definitely not you or me. Squash. This is squash. Yes. I wonder why they call it squash. Is it because you squash the ball against the wall? I'm, I'm sure it might be that i'm not quite sure actually and i don't i don't actually know so i'm just doing a bit of producing here <laughs> i'm producing the show as i go along so yes so squash there it is so squash is a very interesting sport squash people have a strange view of us with that camera yeah there we go go up a bit it's it's no stranger than the normal view trust me so squash is Why a, is are giving a, it a capital S in the middle? But because it's a sport. Well, no, in the middle, towards the end, you've gone squash. Squash. Well, yes, but it, it just looks better when you write it down. OK. What? So the, here it is. This, the, the game is squash. And this is a game I've never played before, Steve. I've never played this, but, but apparently you have. I have, yes. I've played them all. OK, then. So try not to jump ahead. So <laughs> squash is a game that's very competitive and it, it always looks very exhausting when you see people playing squash. I, I feel tired just watching people play squash. So when you watch people do it, it's very, it's very energetic, act, energetic and active. And, oh, yes. my goodness. I, I can't stand it. I really it's a competitive sport. Yes, it's also very aggressive as well. Mind so, you, what sports aren't competitive? So there it is, the first sport that I've never done. So I've never played squash ever in my life. I've never done it. Never played squash ever. But Steve has. So there we go. I have, yes. Badminton, as T.S. has mentioned, so, which of course is very popular. Badminton is very popular in uh, Asian countries, isn't it? Badminton. I think so. Yes. yes. So across Asia, I think badminton is very popular and competitive sport. But that's not squash. I know on about badminton. So why did you mention badminton? Because Tias mentioned it on the live stream. Oh, I see. Is that is that the one with the shuttlecock? That's the one. Is that where you have to knock the shuttle shuttlecock? Yes, it's quite a safe sport, so you don't you don't get sort of badly injured if the shuttlecock hit. Mind you, one hit me in the eye once. That was a bit painful. Yes. Uh, but yeah, yes, it, it, I, I used to like badminton. I, I like tennis as well. Uh, sort of more gentle games, I would, I would say. OK, here's another game that a lot of people seem to enjoy. I don't like it. I don't I don't play this game, but there are a lot of people who do enjoy it. Can you guess what it is, Steve? I don't think that's very hard to guess. Really? No. Are you sure? Football. <laughs> <laughs> That's a, yes, it's it's golf, obviously. It is golf. I've never played golf in my life, ever. I've never played golf. And between you and me, I think it might be on my top five list of the most boring games or sports to watch. So golf, I've never played it. Have you played golf? Yes, I have. Oh, dear. Because my father was a very keen golf player. Golf's, uh, golf's a very good sport because... Uh, you get lots of good exercise. You're out in the open air. Uh, it's it, it, it is very good. It's a very good way of keeping fit and active and lots of people play it. But you've got to be in in the UK, certainly well in the UK. Golf is seen as a bit of an elitist sport. Yes. So it's seen as being played by people with high incomes. Yeah. So wealthy people. 
yes that's the word you're looking for wealthy people if people, you say people that like to show off their wealth they normally join a golf club and golf clubs in the uk they're probably the same everywhere but you've got to is they're very expensive to join and uh, you've got to be seen to be joining the right club so the one that's uh, more exclusive so there might be golf clubs everywhere there are municipal ones where i think you just pay to go in but most of them are privately run and owned yes. and you have to have a quite a, a good income to be able to get into them it's very hard to join golf clubs in the united states they have lots of prejudice yes. in the U usa so certain golf clubs are, are, are very elitist because they only want people of a certain certain types of people to join they don't want riffraff going well joining i wasn't going to say that actually that wasn't what i meant well that is what we mean though. but then well that that might be what you mean but what i mean is they can be very racist all oh, right okay. so they don't like they won't let black people join or even jews there are can you believe that if you're jewish it's very hard to join a country club or golf club. I didn't know that, Mr. Duncan. It's strange. What, in America? Yeah, United States of America. Oh, where did you read that? It's 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 quite well-known knowledge, oh, I actually. I didn't know that yes. at all. So they can be quite prejudiced and elitist, I think, golf clubs. So I, I'm not a big fan of golf. Some of our neighbours like to show off they like to carry their golf clubs around it's a big show off sport yeah. so if you have you have a set of golf clubs on your shoulder you're saying i am wealthy enough or i have enough money to join a golf club mm -hmm. yeah yes it's, it's what you would call an elitist sport yes uh <laughs> in the uk yes um definitely so golf is seen as a sport that is very uh, uh, upper class upper class or high class wealthy people it's basically a sport for rich white people yes let's not beat let's a, not beat about, about the bush let's not beat around the bush unless your golf ball has gone in there <laughs> when i say wealthy it's sort of middle class people upwards make your mind up uh, but yes and there's a lot <laughs> of snobbery associated with the type of golf clubs you've you've got and yeah. uh, and they would have a brand name on them and which club you join and uh, it used to be i don't know if it is now but certainly a lot of business used to be conducted on golf courses yes okay i don't think it is now people used to uh, okay. uh take a, take a customer out yeah. for golf and they yeah. do deals on the golf course okay i haven't gone through my word yet well that, that's why i'm doing that i'm doing that just to say what being annoying for goodness sake <sighs> so here's another one okay uh, did you notice there we we managed to talk about golf without mentioning donald trump that's amazing does he play golf oh does, he's got a golf club in scotland does does he play golf he's got a golf he loves golf doesn't he does donald he's got a golf club in scotland does, does donald trump like golf which okay. caused a lot of controversy <laughs> at the time because okay oh, Okay. Anyway, we won't Don't, go into that. Okay, let's just leave it at move that. Move it on. Move it on, Mr. Duncan. Yeah, it's on the screen. <laughs> there it is. It's on the screen. Croquet. Croquet. Oh, no. what? Why? What? Well, it's on the screen. Yes. Here's a sport. Yes. Here's a sport that I've never played, but Mr. Steve has played. In fact, I can let you in on a little secret. Where Mr. Steve used to live, his parents had a croquet lawn no we didn't yes you did it wasn't croquet your your snooty little friends used to come round and they used to play croquet in mr steve's back garden in fact i have i have a photograph taken in mr steve's back garden and this really? is is this is an actual photograph taken in steve's back garden showing people playing on his lawn so there it is there is proof oh mr duncan <laughs> so there it is that's a made-up picture made-up picture that's a that's a that's a Go that on. is not well it's it's a it's a painting well, isn't yeah. it that's a that's a that is a representation of what used to happen at the back of mr steve's house so there they are and you can see mr steve is the one in in the blue dress it's a gentle <laughs> summertime sport for uh for sort of nice people <laughs> It's a sort of a gentle, 
you know, you, it's summer, it's hot, uh, and you want to go outside and have have a have a nice cup of tea or a glass of wine uh, or something with you've got water with ice in it, a bit of squash. And you all want to have a bit of fun as a family and play a nice gentle sport that people of all ages can play from the young to the to the older person in the family. And you put these hoops in the ground and you yes. and you and it's it's quite a gentle sport. Yes, there it and is. Normally. There it, so yeah. there it there it is. That's the that's the, the scene in Mr. Steve's garden, the place he used to live in. And there's there's Mr. No, Steve. It's not. That's Mr. Steve in the blue dress. And there's Steve's dad. Uh, and and that's the rest of Steve's friends there, all, all playing croquet at the back of the house. Oh, it's it's seen as a sort of a sort of snooty, sort of upper class, sort of. It's the sort of thing you would normally play, and if you, you'd you'd have to have a large uh, lawn area to do that. I think so. Posh house. Yes, it's a bit like golf. Yeah, but it's sort of cra golf is sort of, croquet is sort of you know, the, the, the men have gone out playing golf and the women and the children stay at home and play croquet. Oh, I see. It's sort of a bit like that. OK, if you if you say so, Steve, uh, I, I'm is, not. Isn't, isn't a croquette, isn't, isn't, isn't that uh, the same spelling for what would be uh, a potato rolled up and fried? A croquette? No, there's no tea. <laughs> I don't think there's a tea at the end. <laughs> right. Anyway. Good. What are people saying on the live chat? I'm so glad that we're uh, keeping. There's a bit of antagonism between us today. Oh no, there is. I'm not antagonised. I, I, I'm feeling super duper. Analytic brain. Can I once again say thank you very much for the thing you did earlier? I I, I was quite amazed. Thank you very much. Oh right, have you mentioned this already? Well, yes. I just said again. So well, I wasn't. On no, earlier. No, no, just just I said again. Mr. Duncan was gobsmacked. I was very gobsmacked. My my my, my gob was very smacked. Here's another sport I've never tried, but it is a, it is one that lots of snooty people like to do. Snooty people. Snooty people or people with money. So skiing. Skiing. Yes. Now skiing is a very strange word because it is one of the few words in English that has two eyes next to each other haven't you got two eyes next to each other <laughs> um. hilarious so there we go skiing it's a very strange word that look at that it's got two eyes two eyes look two two <laughs> so people who go skiing skiing is seen as a very elitist Pastime. It is in the UK because we don't. You've got to travel abroad to ski, really, yeah. in this country yeah, we because don't. we don't have any. Well, Scotland do have ski resorts, but they're not that good. No. Uh, you know, if you want the best ski resorts, you've got to go to Switzerland or, uh, or or the French Alps. Yeah, that's it. So you go to the French Alps and Switzerland, and you take your family and you live in a little log cabin, mm. and then you have all of this this equipment and the skis and so it's. Just to get there is expensive. So I think if you live in Switzerland or if you live in France, it's probably not quite so elitist. But I wouldn't say elitist. It's just, yeah, you've got to have some money to be able to go on a skiing holiday. OK. Although there are dry ski slopes. I've done some skiing, but only because I was up in Scotland once. OK. And it was quite good fun. I can't tell you. If you don't know, it certainly makes your legs ache. If you've never done it, I couldn't walk the next well, day. Still. Your, your legs still ache. I did skiing for a day and I couldn't walk properly the next day. I thought I thought you were going to say that your legs still ache from the skiing you did years ago. I thought, no. Wow, that's incredible. So skiing, I've never tried skiing. Don't. For, for two reasons. One, I can't afford it. And two, I, I would be very worried about falling over and breaking something. People break legs when they go on skiing holidays. Yes. It's very common to break a leg. And worse as well. People at school, they used to go on a skiing holiday and inevitably they wanted, they, would, they wouldn't come back to school because they'd broken their legs so they'd be off for six weeks. Ski resorts always have a, a small hospital nearby. And a lot of plaster of Paris. <laughs> Finally, here's... here's now th this is something I'm going to show you now, Steve. So this is this is now this looks like something for catching large flies with, or something for.
catching butterflies with but it isn't it isn't do you know what this is Steve what's it what, do I know what it's called well do you know what it is the object uh, I don't know what it's called no well it it is used in this particular sport Ooh. I've never ever played this sport I don't know what that is the sport is lacrosse 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 well that's a that that no I've never played that one I'm just going to write Sounds it down very French <laughs> lacrosse is that a bit like well it sounds like a, so you would put that in the same category probably as uh, it looks quite a dangerous sport if they've got those helmets on yes it looks quite dangerous so there it is lacrosse so there is another sport that I've never played. Have you ever played it? No. No. So so there is one sport that neither of us has ever played. Never played lacrosse. Well, you haven't played many sports at all, so it's not surprising. That's it. So I'm pretty <laughs> sure if 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 at my school we played lacrosse, they wouldn't let me. Well, uh, lacrosse, you'd have to go to a posh school to play lacrosse. Ah, so it's another sport that's very elitist. Oh, definitely. I should think I should imagine lacrosse is played in, in all the best public schools uh, in uh, private schools, rather, in uh, <laughs> in uh, in uh, in England. Yes, I would imagine. Yes, uh, it's a sort of a posh. It looks like a more dangerous form of hockey. Yes. Well, you don't actually let the ball go no, on. Public the... schools are, are posh schools, aren't they? What? what am I talking about? I'm getting mixed up. OK. I'm enjoying your inner monologue. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, well, lacrosse, you see, you don't let the ball touch the ground, as far as I know. Oh. So you have to catch the ball in the net. And that's the point. You you throw the ball or you, you swipe the ball and then it flies through the air. And then the other person has to catch the ball in the net. All oh, right. And then that's it. That's the sport. So, but it does look a bit rough because mm. everyone has to wear. Yeah, they've got bars on their helmets. They've got helmets and also uh, face shields. So something mm. covering their face. So I, I would imagine that the ball must be very hard. Mm. Maybe that's the reason why. So there we go. I hope you enjoyed that. That's something different. So sports that we've never played ever in our lives. Lacrosse. No, I didn't know much about that. Nope. Back to the live chat, Steve. We have a wonderful Anna says in Italy, in the Alps. That's right. A wonderful place to practice skiing. I'd love to go. I'd love to go to. Uh, I did go on a sort of a, a two day skiing holiday many years ago in Scotland. And I did enjoy it. Hmm. But I said I couldn't I couldn't walk the next day. <laughs> Uh, that wasn't just the skiing, but I couldn't walk the next day. <laughs> I've, I've had I've had many holidays where I couldn't walk afterwards. Mr. Duncan. What? Lacrosse was played for the native Indians of America. I didn't know that. <laughs> volleyball. Volleyball. That, yes, volleyball. That's played by ladies. That's uh, girls, well, isn't it? I think, I think men play volleyball. Do they? That's, that's where you, 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 you hit the ball with the, with, with the tips of your fingers. So you, you delicately... Oh... Do you like play that. volleyball on the beach? Is that what you play on the beach? Oh, you put a, or you, or you, you do it like this. You, you play volleyball. So men men play volleyball. Oh, yes, yes. I think men are... Hunks on the beach play volleyball and all the women <laughs> look at them. OK. And uh, all, Yes, exactly. Yes, it's a spectator sport for the beach volleyball, isn't it? That's it. You put a net up on the sand and all the most attractive people go and play. Yes. And everybody's looking at them. Well, women's volleyball is always very... <laughs> very uh, there's a lot to look at attractive because there's a lot of going up and down like that so if yeah. if you're on the beach and you're wearing a a bikini and you're doing this all the time you can imagine that, that, that there must be a lot of men watching i think I so i imagine so i think so of course men play volleyball says inglaze yeah. yes what do you think yes. about chess Oh, dear. Well, chess is a sport. Again, actually, that's probably an even potentially that can go on for days. So that, that's an even slower sport than fishing. Chess is very, very boring. And I'm talking about the beach. Sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. Go on. <laughs> I'm talking about the sport and the musical. Inglés says yes. That you would call it beach volleyball if it was volleyball on the beach. Makes sense. 
Uh, do I watch sports, Ingres? No, I don't. Uh, my father used to love watching sports and lots of men uh, all over the world, probably not just in the UK. But on, on a Saturday afternoon in uh, in the UK, there's all the sports programmes are on because all the football fixtures are taking place. Whatever is the sport for that time of the year, whether it's football, tennis, cricket, there's all golf. There's always some sport on. And Saturday afternoon is when men who like watching sport just sit by the television for hours on end and just watch sport. And they don't want to be disturbed. And they might have a drink or they might have a smoke. Uh, and <laughs> my dad used to love just sitting there. Well, it was relaxation. He'd been working hard all week. Yeah. He liked sport and he just sat there all afternoon watching sport from from about that's what uh, from about probably I would say uh, just after lunch all the way through to about five o'clock. All the football results would come in around five o'clock and they, they used to come up on this teleprinter thing. Do you remember that, Mr. Duncan? All the football results used to come up on this this typewriter. Uh, when we were growing up, it was sort of this thing would go up and down, and all the results would be printed out live on the screen. Oh, it was so exciting. I've never ever heard anyone get excited. Do you remember that? That, as, that sort of, that sort uh, of, it was like a, like a, like a, an industrial sized typewriter okay. on the screen, and all the results used to come up, and it made this noise, you know, like a typewriter. <laughs> do, do you actually mean. An electronic tele teleprinter. It probably was. That's probably what it was. I've got all these words down here. Yes, I'm just about to do that. But, but you we just haven't got time to do them all now. You just you just keep going off onto other subjects. Oh, I'm so excited. I'm livening up now. I think my sleeping pills have worn off. Yes, or or something else is kicking in. I had a cup of coffee at the start of today's live stream, so uh, so I'm feeling very exciting. Tomek says you are both so ignorant are we tomic is telling us off you are so mm. ignorant you know it's it's not the first time that someone said that to us we are a bit <laughs> when it comes to sports we don't know much about so, it see really. we don't we don't mind being called ignorant about sport because we 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 tell people that we don't know much about mm. sport you are both ignorant in terms of sport women play only volleyball with the tips of their fingers and what about spikes and serves with speed of more than 100 kilometers an hour well I, I i i must admit i've never played volleyball all that much to be honest i remember the ball at school was very soft <laughs> pedro very... likes women's volleyball also yes. he says oh oh yes we we like yes i totally agree women's volleyball is very interesting to watch no, it's mm. just that we don't. We're not. We know about sport. It's just that we. Do. I think what I think what Tomic means is that we're 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 not taking sports seriously. Yes, or or that we're not experts on volleyball. Well, we're not. I don't no. even know why we started talking about it. Really, <laughs> I think it was you that mentioned it. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. Well, we don't. We we don't know everything about. We don't know about everything. There is one problem. That's why you're there to tell us. There is one problem about women's what? volleyball. I don't. I'm reading the live chat, by the way. It's there sore is, breasts. Uh, oh, uh, uh, Inglés. <laughs> you're really throwing me today. <laughs> there is one problem about women's volleyball. I don't know why, but I don't pay attention to the ball. Exactly. Ah, he's, he's not watching the ball. OK. Oh, no, he's watching something else. And Jeff's made a good point athlete's foot if you play any form of sports you always end up with athlete's foot yeah because you have to go in the changing rooms and get changed you put your feet down and a fungus gets in your foot feet and that's it yes so you get all these little mushrooms growing on your feet no that's not what it is mr duncan talking of feet talking of feet yes don't don't say anything else steve nope. look we're on track i'm trying to get us back on track talking of feet thank you jeff Whew. Jeff's got us back on track. Talking, almost talking, talking of feet, we have some expressions to do with feet and foot, feet and foot. Believe it or not, there are many expressions in the English language connected to feet and foot. And Steve is now going to show us some 
of those expressions. I am. I've got them divided into expressions and idioms connected with feet yeah. and expressions and idioms you, you, connected you, with you, the foot. Oh, you've you, done that already. You, you might, you might Here's the first one, went there, went there. Uh, You might have to edit some of this, you see. So Here's the first one. Think on your feet. Think on your feet. Think on your feet. That means that you need to... Oh, I don't want to do that, Mr Duncan. No. I don't like that. It's just slowing everything down. There you go. And it's very... Oh, it's very annoying. I don't like this. To think on your feet... To make decisions quickly without time to plan beforehand. If you want to work in live TV, you need to be able to think on your feet. If you need to, be, to if, if, if you want to be able to do live streams on YouTube, so you have to keep, you have to think on your feet. Well, yes, you have to think on your feet, Steve. Yes, exactly. That's you have why. to make decisions so, quickly. So when I change the camera, you see, think on your feet. Think on your feet. Move it down there so, so everyone can see. So it. I'm actually demonstrating the, the the phrase well sort of think on your feet uh yes yeah, so uh, uh, something might go wrong something might not go according to plan and uh oh mr duncan i can't do that i can't do i can't multi th i can't do two things at once mr duncan you you must think on your feet yes yeah, so if you suddenly said to me talk about this subject i'd have to suddenly rapidly think quickly on my feet no time to plan about anything so when when something happens and it's not going according to plan and you have to change and adapt to a new situation uh then that means you're thinking on your feet quick you've got to have a quick brain to think and and uh, and, and decide what to do right now what's mr duncan going to do now I wonder find your feet if you find your feet that means you become familiar or confident uh, with a new situation or experience, you find your feet. He's only been in the job for a week. Give him a chance to find his feet. So you might be doing things wrong at first, but you just need to... It's settling in would be another way of you... Uh, 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 an equivalent phrase to that. Find your feet. What, do, what are you laughing at, Mr Duncan? No, I'm not laughing at anything. I'm just happy today. I'm so happy. Uh, or you could. It doesn't have to be used in the negative. You could use it in a more positive way. He's only been in the job a week, but he's already found his feet. So he's already got used to it, knows how to do it, got quickly into it. So you I can use it in the negative and the positive. It's amusing because because it, it's something that that when you think about that expression, finding your feet, it, it it's it's almost absurd it's absurd it is but because uh, you can find your feet very easily there they are down there but if you couldn't but yes it just means to get used to a, a situation a new situation to find your feet to adapt in a way here's another one to keep your feet on the ground keep your feet on the ground if, if you say to somebody somebody's keeping their feet on the ground it means they're being sensible and practical mm. uh, about a situation so here's an example. I know you have just inherited a lot of money, but make sure to keep your feet on the ground or it could cause a problem. So what you're saying is if suddenly you had a lot of money, you might go out spending it wildly on all sorts of things. Mm. No, keep your, keep your feet on the ground and just, uh, just be practical and be sensible. I'm very excited about the new project at work. Ha! <laughs> I always have to get a project oh, at work. There's in. always a project at work. Uh, but I need to keep my feet on the ground, or I will lose my way, and the project will go off track. So you <laughs> might be excited. You might be. You might try all sorts of different things. But in fact, you know, keep your feet on the ground. Can you think of another way of using that phrase, Mister? Well, it's also if you become famous. So maybe you are unknown. Yes. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> Keep your feet on the ground. If you become famous, then you might lose control of the things that you do. Maybe you spend all your money and you, you think that you are more important than you really are. Overconfident and arrogant. So, yes. So, normally the advice is if you become famous, you must keep your feet on the ground. Remain level-headed. That's it. You might get a promotion at work. And you might become a manager and you get very arrogant and you you talk badly to to all your uh, 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 all your employees that you used to work with and you get overly confident so you you know just step back keep your feet on the ground cold feet 
do you ever get cold feet mr duncan i'm, I'm getting them at the moment cold feet if you get cut if you get cold feet it means you suddenly get a, a lot of confidence a, lo a lot of courage or you might change your mind over something so mr duncan uh might say oh i'm not sure if i want to go live today uh, i'm getting cold feet yes because he's feeling a bit nervous or a bit anxious suddenly what doesn't he thought it might be a good idea but then suddenly he's changed his mind or it might be a particular subject you might want to talk about a controversial controversial subject on the live stream yes and you might get cold feet and think mm, that might not go very well we won't talk about that uh they've put the marriage off here's another here's an example they've put the marriage off for now as emma has got cold feet mm. over the whole thing so you going to get married to somebody and then you suddenly have doubts about the person you're going to get married you might have cold feet you get cold feet get cold feet you can uh, drag your feet or drag your heels that sounds that one's quite obvious probably to do something slowly because you don't want to do it do something reluctantly or to postpone something do something without enthusiasm so you don't want to do something and what you do is you delay mm. you drag your feet so if you're dragging your feet then you're slowly moving towards something for example i suspect the government is dragging its heels or dragging its feet over this issue so they might want to introduce something the government but they they don't want to do it so they they put all sorts of delaying practices in place and that means that they're dragging their feet so maybe you're planning to get married but you don't really want to get married and so you keep putting the wedding off you keep putting it off you keep delaying it so we can say that you are dragging your feet mr duncan doesn't really want to get married he appears to be dragging his feet yes yeah, so you probably were initially enthusiastic and then when you'd had time to think hmm, I'm not sure about that so you're delaying delaying tactics procrastination Ooh. you could use that as, a, as an equivalent phrase if someone's dragging their free feet they're procrastinating they're putting something off that's something else you can't do on YouTube <laughs> yes now to get one's feet wet or to get your feet wet that means to start a new activity or a new job for example so you've had plenty of you've had plenty of time to think about what to do it's now time just to get your feet wet so you dive in so sometimes if you want to do something new uh, a new task maybe you want to play a new sport and you've read up about it uh, but eventually you've got to you you can't keep reading about it and looking up uh, and trying to work out how to do something the only way of doing it is actually to dive in and start doing it so you've got to get your feet wet it's equivalent to if you want to swim uh, you can't avoid getting your feet wet you've got to get wet if you're going to swim uh, so it means you've got to you've got to actually dive in and do it isn't that right Mr. that's Duncan? good yes I like that one get your feet wet to try something to to do something that is an activity that you're not sure about so you have to get your feet wet yes you can't keep reading up about it and thinking about how to do it you've just got to start it at some point and do it right so that's feet now we're looking at foot are you with us mr duncan Seems oh I'm, I'm with you I've, I've got an email coming through here from let me just have the a Queen. look here not the queen okay. no it's actually from blue thunder has sent a picture oh <laughs> and there is blue thunder how lovely i'm always curious to find out what my viewers look like and there there is blue thunder oh blue thunder shall we we can actually make that appear on the small camera underneath so thank you very much blue thunder for your picture so there we go there we go. look at that we can make that look very clear on the camera so thank you very much to Blue Thunder. She's sticking two fingers up to us. There we go. Blue Hello, Thun Blue Thunder. Thank, thank you. You've got a blue top on as well. Blue Thunder, thank you very much for that. And headphones. Yes, so good. See, just to prove that you we are. Be careful doing <laughs> doing that to English people because it's uh, and French people. They don't like that expression, do they? They don't like that. That. Yes, it's it's kind of well. It has different meanings in different places. It has different meanings in different yes. cultures. Yeah. If you stick 
two fingers up to people in the UK. Yes. It's a, it's a like, insult. Like, like Steve's doing now. It's an insult in the UK. The worst one is is, is that one. We can't do that. You can't do that, you see. Well, I, we well, I have to. That's what, well, no, you can't. No, but again, do, do you understand the terms and conditions of being on YouTube? No. No, that's that's offensive. You could you could lose your YouTube channel if you if you did that. Really? Well, yes, that's my finger. I'm telling you now. I didn't <laughs> yes, know that. There you go. So there you go. You see, see, I'm doing it, but you can't see it. But you but you kind of know what I'm doing. But if you do that on YouTube, they will take your channel away. So lovely to see Blue Thunder. Thank you, Blue Thunder. You don't look very old. I've noticed one thing there. You 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 don't look very old. You look much younger than than us. Very young, very attractive. Listening listening to us through headphones. So, so, what did you just say then? I just said young and attractive. Okay. Blue Thunder looked attractive. I thought she looked very attractive in that uh, in that picture. Uh, right. Oh, I didn't know. Mr. There are Duncan. so many things wrong with what Mr. Steve just said. I can't I can't begin. I will tell you afterwards all of the things that you said wrong there. I drop my foot in it, don't I? Look at that, Mr. Duncan. To drop your foot in it. Drop, I... drop your foot in it. I've never heard of that expression. Haven't you? You can put your foot in it. Put your foot in it. Yes. And yes. I'll, yes, there we go. So now we're going into expressions with foot. Uh, and I'm going to look for that one first. Uh, oh, I don't think I've done that one. <laughs> oh, okay, this is going well. Oh yes. Five minutes. Well, there's a new one. If you if you if you put your foot in something, yeah. put your foot in it. You make a mistake. You make a mistake. A, a, a blunder. Norm, yeah, a serious mistake. I haven't. I didn't do that one at all. Just write that like, down, Mr. Like, Duncan. Like failing to recognise the gender of one of your viewers. I couldn't tell. I'm sorry. I'm this, sorry, I do apologise. This is just getting worse by the second. I apologise, Blue Thunder. Please, YouTube, please, please. It's an honest mistake. Please don't take the channel away from me. It's all I have. This, this is all I have in my life. I have, no, I have nothing else. Pedro in Belarus, if, if only you could... Uh, you, you know, I'm sure you can't get rid of me, unfortunately. <laughs> it's, just, it's just me and the birds. Oh. That's it. That's all I yes. have. I have you, I have the birds, and that's it. Well, so, I still think you look very attractive. Right, so we're talking about feet. I think it's about ten years old. Okay, right. <laughs> Would you write down, put your foot in it? Write down, put your foot yeah. in it, because that's an expression I've I, forgotten. I, I, I'm actually going to write, Mr. Steve has put his foot in I it. I can't tell people's ages. Anyway, while Mr. Duncan's doing that, at the if you're at the foot of something, at the foot of something that means you're at the bottom the lowest part of something so you're at the foot of the hills you're at the bottom of the hills you're at the foot of the bed you're at the bottom end of the bed the foot of the page the bottom of the page if, you're, if somebody says you're at the foot of something that means you're at the lowest part yes or the end or the end exactly yes so you so, can be uh, at the foot of the bed I've just said that it means well that's where your feet are isn't it at the bottom end so there it is. Put your foot in put it. Put your foot in it. I just put my foot in it. So Steve, Steve, didn't, which I do all the time. Steve didn't recognise the. Uh, anyway, if you <sighs> make a blunder, if you do some make some stupid mistake over something, you put your foot in it. So, for example, if you were uh, if you weren't supposed to reveal some information about, for example, two people getting married, if somebody had said to you, oh. Uh, we're getting married, but don't tell anybody. We don't because we haven't announced it yet. And then you go out, and by mistake, you just happen to mention, "Oh, I've just heard such and such are getting married." <gasps> you put your foot in it. That's you it. made a blunder. Another good one is uh, you might go up to a lady in the street that you know and say, "Oh, oh, I believe congratulations are in order." Oh, and, and she says, "What do you mean?" And he said, "Oh, oh, it looks like you've got a baby on the way there." And she says. I'm not pregnant. I'm just I'm just a bit overweight. You put your foot in it. Yes. Put your foot in it. That, that, that almost sounds like it's something that's actually happened to me. Have you noticed that? that? That almost seems to be something that's actually happened where I've assumed that a woman was pregnant, but she was just a little bit overweight. 
mr. Duncan blue thunder has sent an audio message for you well I can't open that and share it because I, I don't have any any way of doing that don't you well no okay no I, I won't be doing four that. minutes to get about eight words in eight expressions in mr. Duncan one foot in the grave one foot in the grave. One foot in the grave. That that's means near to death. That's it. That's how I feel every morning when I wake up. Near to death, but sort of said in a humorous way. Yeah. Oh, he's got one foot in the grave. You've got one foot in the grave, you have. It's sort of said, done in a humorous way, isn't it? I, think I, most I don't think anyone is going to find that funny. If you say to someone, you look like you've got one foot in the grave. It's, a, well, I think it's sort of said jokingly, isn't it? OK. Uh, but it means somebody who looks like... They could die any minute. They, they might look unwell. They might look unwell. Unwell. Or you could say, I feel like I've got one foot in the grave. If you feel old and tired out, you might say, oh, I feel as if I've got one foot in the grave. Put your best foot forward. Put your best foot forward or pe put your best feet forward. Encour encouragement. Make a favourable impression by trying extra hard. You, you you really try hard to show your best points. So, for example, um, don't forget to put your best foot forward in the job interview, someone might say to you. You're going for a job interview and you, you've got to show off your best points. Talk about what's, what's so good about you uh, in that job interview. Put your best foot forward or put your best feet forward. Uh, I want to impress my new boss at work, so I'm going to put my best foot forward. Yeah all week and get some good sales in put your best foot forward get off on the wrong foot if you get off on the wrong foot it means you get off to a bad start or mm. you begin something badly or incorrectly mm. normally in relationships with other people meeting someone for the first time maybe you meet someone for the first time and you have maybe you talk about a subject and you sort of almost start arguing uh, you could say that that relationship got off to a, a bad start or got off to, on the wrong foot. <laughs> I always remember that scene. There is a Ricky Gervais program and he goes on a date, a blind date with um, a woman. And the first thing he starts talking about is, is the necklace that she's wearing. And then he starts talking about women's breasts and, and she gets really upset about it. And he yes. says, look, I can see. I can see that we've got off on the wrong foot. Yes, it just means that you've probably accidentally or by yes, by accident said the wrong thing to somebody when mm. you first meet them mm. and uh, they get a, a bad impression on you and you can say that you've got off on the wrong foot. And you can actually say, oh, look, I'm sorry, we've got off on the wrong foot. Let's start again. I didn't mean that. Yeah. Uh, you, you could say a project started on the... You can say the opposite of that. You can say... Uh, something started on the right foot so that means it started off well so you could say a project started on the right foot but then went badly wrong uh, a week later isn't that right Mr Duncan so you can say the opposite that something got off on the right foot but you can say you got off on the wrong foot as well that's it the we, wrong foot, the right we started foot. off in a bad way let's let's forget that and start again no but you can start off on the right foot mm. And then get off on the wrong foot. That's it. Later on. Uh, foot the bill. Foot the bill. <laughs> I hope the YouTube subtitles get that right. If you uh, foot the bill means that you are you're paying the bill. Foot. And it usually refers to a big expense or a big bill. Footing the bill. Yes, foot. It means a large expense. So, for example, you might go to a party and they've spent, oh, it's been a lot of, there's a hundred people there, it's in, a, in an expensive uh, restaurant, and you might say, oh, blimey, this is quite an expensive party, I wonder who's footing the bill for this. Yes. Who's paying who's for paying? it? Who's paying, who's footing the bill? Who's paying for it all? You hit my car, uh, I'm not going to repair it, it's up to you to foot the bill. Mm. Foot. Foot the bill. <laughs> I'm not sure if the YouTube subtitles are going to actually translate that right. I hope it comes up as foot the bill. Foot. Foot. Foot the bill. Not F-U-T. It's the way you pronounce it, Mr. Duncan. Foot the bill, yes. Take care of the bills. And it's usually an expensive one. Uh, that's that. One more. 
get your foot in the door that's it get your foot in the door i mean the literal meaning of that is a door's opening and you're trying to prevent it uh, from closing by putting your foot in what it means is you you you're succeeding with a first step mr what have you done what have you just done there mr duncan nothing succeed with the first step so for example uh you want to work <clears throat> you want to work in a particular company and you want to do a certain job but you can't do the job you want to do but you'll take any job just to get into work for that company so you've got your foot in the door so you might want for, for example you might want to uh, be a salesman on the road uh, but when you first apply for a job with that company they'll only let you go on the phones in the head office but you've got your foot in the door mm. uh, uh, you might start off with a, with, with a lower paid job than you want yes. but you've got in you've got your foot yes. in the door so you start at the bottom and you work your way up so at the beginning you put your foot in the door what's Steve doing look I can't I can't have this live stream go on too long all right okay we'll finish no then. no no the, no, well, no, no, we no, no okay here we go this is this That's is what, the last one this is the one Steve is so desperate to show uh, have your feet in both camps <laughs> have your feet in both camps you say you've got an interest or or in two opposing things uh, so it could be two groups you might for example I've worked with both teams but I can't decide which one to go for I guess I have I've still got a foot in both camps mm. Um, yes, you could be going out with somebody. You could be going out with two different people and you can't decide which one to marry. And you mm. might say, and somebody might say to you, you've got to make a decision. You can't keep your feet in both yeah. camps forever. You might say that your loyalties as well, if you're loyal to one group of people, but also another. Yes. And you might say that you have feet in both camps because you are loyal to both parties. But the potential is that it could cause you problems. Oh, yes. You might have to make a decision. Definitely. Which one to go for. Anyway, it's time to say goodbye. It is. Bye. Oh. 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 I got excited then. I thought that was. I thought that really Can was. We have a it. quick look at the live chat before we go. The live chat before. We, 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 we are overrunning a lot today. We are overrunning, yes. There it is. Then there's the live chat, Steve. Uh, fine. No, I haven't upset anyone, so it's fine. Oh, no, not as far as we know. Mr. Duncan forbade us to give the number in the chat so we communicate in FB, whatever that is. Yes, right. uh, I would imagine FB is Facebook. Right. I think one or two people on the live chat have, have mentioned starting a chat group on WhatsApp. Oh. The only problem is that these things start off very active but then over time they start to drift away and disappear so yes there have been many english groups that have been formed over the past few years and, and they always end up just disappearing or fading away so people are very excited at first and then over time it, it, it all just fades away oh jeff mentioned a foot fetish yes that means somebody who's got a a, a sexual interest in uh, in in feet yes a uh, bit of a fetish there's if you look on YouTube there's lots of apparently so I've heard so I've heard there are videos of people just putting their feet by the camera and that's it few people have mentioned as well one foot in the grave is was a, 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 a comedy television uh, program in the UK uh, called One Foot in the Grave, which obviously some people have noticed and watch and find quite funny okay. Tomic says he finds it hilarious Oh, I see. Uh, we don't often appreciate that, that, that we're exporting our comedy shows across the world. Are you sure that Tom Eck isn't just finding the expression funny? Maybe he is. Ah. Maybe he is. But there is a programme called One Foot in the Grave. There was a TV show, a comedy show about an old man who was very moody and cantankerous. He was a curmudgeon. And he would always say, I don't believe it whenever he got angry about things so yes okay let's so wrap up that's it let's go then we're gonna have a cup of tea and a tea cake and a tea cake oh that sounds very very good thank you very much for that thanks for your company for the past two hours and five minutes i can't believe that two hours and five minutes we've been on Wow. We will see you next Sunday for those who aren't too sure when we are on next. We are on 
next Sunday from 2 p.m. UK time so that is when you can catch us live the next time next Sunday from 2 p.m. UK time thanks a lot Steve thank you to ta for now it's I don't know why I say to ta for now because that's your phrase it, it's bye okay. for now bye I, for now I don't own it bye for now I don't own it so see don't. you next Sunday see you Steve ta -ta. are you fading me out or am I just walking off I will use my superpowers again <laughs> what's he doing down there what what are you doing down there Steve <laughs> bye I can't get rid of him see you next week this is mr. Duncan saying thanks ever such a lot for watching me tomorrow by the way is bonfire night there will be lots of fireworks lots of fireworks going off lots of bonfires being lit so that's happening tomorrow on November the 5th I will see you next Sunday. This is Mr. Duncan saying thank you so much for watching me today. Thanks for tuning in and I hope you've enjoyed it. And of course, you know what's coming next. Yes, you do. Until next week. Whew. It's been a very busy one today, hasn't it? Ta-ta for now.